So we left it off where we had all of these different links and they went to what we would hope to be actual pages, right? So in this case, they were all page not found, but one of the things among them is the URL pattern it actually has. Each one of them has article in it, and then that's preceded by a number of some kind, right? And that number is related to the ID in the database, but it could be all sorts of things. Now, in our case, we need to learn how to actually handle this dynamic URL. And the place that you can start is of course the views. You could create a view and we could go ahead and say, let's do define and would be something like article home view. And we say request, and then we're gonna return some sort of HTTP response. Now the biggest question is, well, should this actually exist in the primary Django views or should it exist in the article app views? And I think you might know what my answer is. It's gonna exist in the article app views. Now, before we even define the view, let's think about what it is that we are trying to accomplish here. Well, the first thing is we're trying to handle a URL route. We are trying to handle a dynamic URL route, one that changes based on user input, right? So if the user inputs four, we wanna be able to handle what that route is. And so to do that, we need to start with the URLs themselves. Like how do we even define a URL to handle that dynamic URL path? And to do this, we define path, of course. And the first part of path is the actual URL path that we'll use. And then the second one will be the view. In this case, I'll just leave it in as home view for now. And now what's the path that we are trying to use? Well, again, we can go back and take a look at this and just copy this whole thing and paste it in here. But of course we don't actually need that slash at the beginning that is inferred by Django. It would even warn you not to put it. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And so as it stands right now, articles slash four should be handled by this home view. Okay, so in here, article slash four, we refresh in here. And what do you know? It's actually showing up. It's actually rendering out a page. But articles two, of course, is not. Because that four is hard coded. We need that to be dynamic. We needed to change based off of that user input. And so to do this with the latest version of Django, we use these brackets here. We declare a data type that would be passed in here. You could say str for string or you can say int for integer, and then we put a colon and give it a specific value. So let's go ahead and just say ID to start out. Okay, so we know that from our templates, this is an ID field. It actually came from an article ID field. That's why we're calling it ID at this point. And so now that we've got this, this is actually how you handle that view, or rather that path for a potential view to handle that path. Um, and so now we refresh in here and we get this error. Home view got unexpected keyword argument ID. What is this? Okay, so this is not a very clear error that happens. And that does happen from time to time with Django. So what if you actually copied this and said view got unexpected error keyword argument ID. Of course, you are gonna find some values to this. Now, I already know what the answer is, uh, but what you might come across is the old syntax of Django, which was just simply URL, and it was a regular expression, something a little bit more like this. And let's go ahead and just try it out. And it was, you would see something along those lines. Now. Believe it or not, these two are almost identical statements. Um, it's just the newer version of Django is a little bit easier to read. The older one is a regular expression. So if you're not familiar with regular expressions, this will look like gibberish to you, where hopefully this is a little bit more achievable. Now, regular expressions can still be used in these URLs, but it's no longer a URL, it's simply just RE path. Now again, the reason I'm showing you this has to do with the fact that, well, a lot of times when you do those Google searches, as we just saw, and you click on it, you're gonna see what's this URL stuff, right? So it says URL in here, and I actually just showed you this right here, okay? So that is important to know that Django has evolved a little bit, but hopefully not too much where you can't solve some of these problems. Anyway, so let's get that out and actually solve the real problem that we face, which is that view still, okay? And so I refresh in here, and it's saying home view, so the actual function got an unexpected keyword argument of ID. 
So the function itself is flawed. So let's go back into that function, the home view itself, and we see the arguments that are in here. There is a positional argument of request, but nothing else. So this function can't actually accept any other arguments. So if you're learning Python or you don't know that Python that well, you can actually use this args and keyword args uh, with a star in front of it to see other arguments that might be coming through with one of these functions. So you can actually print those out with args and keyword args. And so um, these are just a really nice and clean way that Python has to just collect every possible argument that could go in here. So we save that and now we can refresh. Of course, there's no error now. And if we actually see the terminal, we should see the printout of these two things, right? So we refresh several times and we'll see that same printout every time. And notice it's the exact ID that's in the URL. That again can be measured right there. So if we changed it to three, it's exactly three, right? So the, what's being rendered is not correct, but the ID that's coming through is correct. Now, what if we go back into the URLs and change this to something else like ABC, right? So yet again, I refresh in here, and now it just changed that argument, it changed that keyword argument. So again, if we wanted to mess up the view, we could just cut out the args and keyword args, save it, refresh in here. Now it's saying that it gets an unexpected keyword argument of ABC. So this is a Python problem that is not handling the arguments that are coming in correctly. It's not exactly a Django problem because Django is just sending some data to a Python function. Anyway, so now that we can handle this value, or at least we can attempt to handle this value, what do we do? Well, going back into our URLs, let's keep it as ID, and back into our views. Now what we can do is actually pass in ID as a positional argument in the home view, certainly after request here. So we can save that, and now what we can do is actually print out the ID itself. So we print it out, and now it's gonna actually print that out right here, which is always gonna be three for this particular URL. Now we're actually cobbling up the home view itself. The home view is not the correct place for this. So what I wanna do is actually change it from the home view to being a proper view to handle this type of lookup, to, to handle the single object here, to handle that single detail of that one article object. And so this is actually gonna live inside of articles views.py. This actually makes the most sense as to where it should be. So this will be article detail view, and it's gonna take in requests, and again, it will take in ID as we just declared, and then we can return something here. Now, we've already talked about returning a render to string and an HTTP response. That's pretty cool, but what's even cooler is render, the shortcut that comes into apps by default, does that for us. So we can actually do render, pass in the request, the template name that we want, and the context that we want. Pretty cool, right? So this is actually combining these two, which just gives us one less step to write and one less step to remember, but it's important to know how we got here. Now, the reason the request is coming through is because by default, we actually want to pass the request to the HTML template. In the cases that you don't, you won't have to. Now, that request will come back. We will absolutely use it in templates later. There's still a lot more things that we can unpack there. But before we even get there, let's finish this part out. So now what we wanna do is, of course, get a template. In this case, it's gonna be articles slash detail.html. And then the context, well, what is the context that I want? Well, certainly, let's go ahead and just have it in as a variable like this. I'm gonna go ahead and say object, and well, right now it's none. Okay, so we'll leave it in as none, okay? And in fact, I will come into my article detail view and also set the ID as a default of none. I'll explain why we're doing this in a moment. But now that we've got that, we can use this ID for a lookup to our article. Now we've already done this before. So going back into that home view, this is what we're trying to do now. But instead of using a random ID or really pseudo random ID, we're gonna use a specific one. So let's go ahead and copy this exact same concept. So first off, we have to import from articles.models. We're gonna go ahead and import the article class. Now, in this case, we are actually in the articles module. So 
We'll do a relative import and get rid of that. So it's from dot models because this views is right next to models.py. And so now what I can do is say OBJ, or you could also say article OBJ equals to article dot objects dot get ID equals to, well, now the parameter of the ID. And of course, if this is not none, so really we're gonna go ahead and say article OBJ is none. And we'll say if ID is not none, then we'll go ahead and do that lookup. And we'll pass this in here. And there we go. So of course, we have to add this to our URLs now. So going back into our URL. So I'm gonna show you the other way, the way that it's often recommended to import those views. So we'll go ahead and do from article, our articles, import views. And so now down here, we can do views dot and article detail view. Okay, so now we actually have the view set up correctly with the actual dynamic URL. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. I refresh in here, and what do you know? I get a template does not exist. Now, this should not be groundbreaking to you, uh, but it might be news. Maybe you didn't expect this to happen, but it should be expected because of several reasons. First, when we created our home view, it took us a while before we actually even created the first template, but we did. We actually created that template. When we did this view, did we ever create this template? And of course the answer is no, but notice that I have it in articles slash detail. That means that actually in my templates folder, I can make a new folder called articles and inside of there, I can do detail.html. So detail is actually a common way to talk about having the details of a single item. It's not a list of items, but it's a single item as we've been sort of working towards. That's also why I called it the article detail view. Sometimes it's called the retrieve view, but oftentimes it will be the detail view. So anyway, so now we have that template in there. We can save it and all that. And we refresh. Of course, now it's an empty blank template. No surprise here. So what is it that we have to do to fill out this template? And that is to say extends base.html and then underneath this, we're gonna go ahead and do block content and in block content. Now, hopefully all of this is what you expect at this point. To reiterate why, first of all, base.html was that one file that we wanna inherit from across all of my project because it has all of the HTML structure. Certainly it could have more, but right now it has enough. Next, we actually wanted to say block content because we want to change what's in there on that base uh, HTML, All right? So everything that's in here, we want to change to the actual detail. So what is the actual detail? So we're going to go ahead and say H1, and this is going to be, well, the context based off of that, what I'm passing. So object, for example, we've got object.title. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and grab this and right underneath, we're gonna go ahead and do object.content. Okay, now of course I can have the ID show up, but at this point it's no longer necessary. So let's go back into our article and what do you know? Now it's not refreshing every time. So if we go back to the home page, I'm getting this missing positional argument, which is funny. Um, so let's go back to the home page and say why. It's funny because as it stands right here, this is actually required. So we, if we put in none here, it's no longer required. And then therefore this is um, now able to run. So uh, if we have a positional argument without a default value, it's gonna give us that error. But of course our homepage, we actually don't want the ID at all anymore. So we'll go ahead and just get rid of it altogether. But now if we go into the homepage, we can refresh several times and then I can click on this page and it actually takes me to that article. Now, of course, if I actually go to an article that does not exist, I get this new error. Now, this is something we'll come back to, but hopefully it's not that surprising because it's actually looking in the database for an article that does not exist. So we actually have safeguards within Django to ensure that we're not breaking our database in any sense. It's just gonna kind of mess things up right here, which again, we will fix later. 
So that's handling dynamic URL routing. Just as a quick recap, the key to it is really this path right here or using a regular expression path. But once you actually have this path, you can have an arbitrary number of arguments that come in here. In other words, we can actually do something like int and call it year, right? So we can add other kinds of arguments that would then be passed to this URL, uh, which I think is actually really, really cool. After we have the path set up, then we need to make sure that our view can handle the arguments that we set in our URL. Because it always starts with the URL, then we find the view. We sort of did it backwards just to get a better understanding of how views work, but this is it, right? We've got URLs first, then the view to handle it, and then we render out whatever we want in that view. In this case, we just did something that's very similar to something we already did, but now it has real meaning, real purpose, because it's actually showing the detail for this particular object. I think that's pretty cool. Let's keep going. <laughs>